Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 18th, and it is an absolutely beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Spent a lot of time out, out in the yard this morning doing the stuff that you gotta do, and uh, just perfect cool weather. It's gonna be 80 something this afternoon. Just a really nice day. Hope you're having a great Sunday and enjoying some, uh, some good weather uh, in your neck of the woods. I know a lot of you guys are very hot. I know a lot of you guys are under threat of fires, um, which uh, I hope, you know, I've been getting some updates from my buddy Dean and uh, it, it's kind of scary what's going on out there in on the, on the West Coast. There's some massive fires and uh, they're moving fast. So hope you're all safe and sound. Oh, and there's a tropical storm moving down through uh, Puerto Rico, which our buddy Ochoita might be impacted by. So found out about that on Friday. So anyway, I hope, hope everybody's safe from the weather and other natural phenomenon. Smoking some uh, haunted bookshop in my uh, cane rod pipes number one. Uh, <clears throat> technically, my first billiard, I'm calling it a Demi Lovat because of the stem. But and I, I love this pipe. It's uh, it's very light and it's just fun to fun to smoke, easy to clench. So I've got uh, got some shop updates and another pipe that I will show you uh, later. So good reason to stick around. And uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen the pipe that I'm going to show you. So good reason to follow me on Instagram. Uh, I think there's a link downstairs for that. But the first thing I want to talk about is uh, a, a mess of things about neighbors. Uh, so I go out on Sunday mornings and I, uh, among other things, I clean up the yard. I've got two dogs and you have to clean the yard when you have two dogs. And the timing is such that me and the two dogs are out there, and normally they're they're fairly calm. Uh, but there's a woman across the street who seems to be running an aerobics class in her garage. I mean, that's what it sounds like, and she has in the past done this. I've seen people there in her driveway, like, doing aerobics and stuff. But lately, there's been no one there. And... I don't know, maybe she's doing like an online thing or something, but it sure is loud. Well, that got them a little riled up this morning, the dogs. They didn't like hearing that voice coming from across the street, and there was some barking. I got them calmed down. And I got to say, my dogs are my dogs are good dogs, and when we're in the house, they absolutely listen to me. There's, there's no, no issues at all with them. But they're not real good with distraction, and that's my fault for not doing a better job when they were young and, you know, introducing them to novelty and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, something like that or a dog barking down the block or something, they're going to bark a bit and I have to calm them. I can't just say, hey, stop. Um, Thatcher sometimes, Isabel not so much. Anyway, uh, I get them calmed down with a couple of words. This wasn't difficult. Uh, they, they understood, I guess because I'm out there, it must not have been an imminent threat, just somebody crazy across the street. So they calm down, they're actually laying by the fence, uh, just watching the world go by, and they're happy as can be. And I'm pacing up and down the yard doing what I have to do. Now, about this time, every Sunday, um, a couple walks by man and a woman, probably in their early 60s, late 50s, early 60s. And there you walk a little dog. Uh, I think it's like a little, I don't know what it is, the little dog. And they walk right along our sidewalk. And my dogs get very excited when they see them coming and they'll start running around and there'll be some barking and they'll, and, and most dog owners are okay with this. You know, most dog owners understand that if you walk a dog by somebody's yard that has a dog, the dog is probably going to bark. Um, my dogs do get a little rambunctious, and I do have trouble controlling them in this kind of situation. So sometimes 
I've had people like give me dirty looks or something, in which case I just wave to them and let the dogs do whatever they want to do. <laughs> but nine times out of ten, maybe even more than that, uh, maybe nine and a half times out of ten, the person will smile and say good morning, and you know, or they'll actually stop and talk to the dogs, which is great because then the dogs get to know them, and the next time they come by, it's not a problem. But I understand people don't like to be barked at, too. You know, I, I see it from both sides. So anyway, these folks, they tend to walk by pretty quickly, but they always say good morning and they'll wave and, and you know, great. And I have, I have a theory on neighbors. That's about all the interaction I want to have. I'll say good morning, I'll wave. I don't want anything beyond that. And I've worked really hard over the years to cultivate a personality and identity that prevents them from getting any closer to me, much to my wife's chagrin. See, the problem is if, if, you, if you go beyond good morning, then they're going to want to talk. And I've pretty much got two things I can talk about. Well, I've got more than that, but, but I, I can talk about science and I can talk about pipes, and they don't want to talk about either of those things. After that, it's things like religion and politics, and, you know, why? We either agree or we don't, and, you know, unless you're going to actually listen and have a conversation with me, we're not going to get anywhere, so just, just go away. <laughs> just go off and be happy and leave me alone to be happy. But boy, once there's a chink in that armor, once you go behind good morning, they're, they're your friend. I don't want that. My wife is the exact opposite. She's a talker. We go to the grocery store. She talks to people in the grocery store. I, I go shopping the way you know, Neolithic man would hunt for mammoth. <laughs> I go in, I'm quiet. I get the thing I need and I get out of there. If if they sold grocery store appropriate camouflage, I would wear it. So I, I'm shopping by myself and I, I have to pick up a frozen pizza. We get these cauliflower crust pizzas, which are actually quite good. Um, and they fit with our wacky gluten-free lifestyle. My wife is, she actually does have some problems with it. Um, I'm just riding the coattails. So I turn up the aisle. I'm by myself. I see somebody at the part of the frozen food case where these cauliflower pizzas are. I just look at the next thing on my list and go, I'll circle back for it. I do not want to have to stand there while this idiot figures out whether he wants free range pepperoni or organic pepperoni. I don't care. Just get your pizza. Get out of my way. My wife, on the other hand, you know, she'll go ahead of me because I'm slow, apparently. And she'll walk up to this person and, you know, say, oh, have you tried those? They're so good. And I hear this. And I'm like, ah, good Lord, no. And then there'll be like a 10-minute conversation. Oh, really? Well, have you have tried these? No, I haven't. But it's really great if you put this on. Why? Why? Just... Just let them do their thing and then do your thing. Anyway. Sorry, I had an alarm going off here that's meaningless. Uh, I'm, I'm not what you would call a people person. You probably know that, though. So to get back to the dogs. About this time, as I'm cleaning the yard, these neighbors normally walk by. Well, the dogs start to get excited, and they erupt. And this is not their normal reaction to these, these two neighbors. And I look up, and instead of seeing the two neighbors walk by, I see a rather large fox trotting past my yard. <laughs> now, we do see fox occasionally here. Not often this public. You know, not they're, they're, they tend to be a bit... Uh, Spooky, and, and they run when they see people. No, this one was just very brazenly walking past the yard, and the dogs were crazy. Now, it picked up the pace a bit, and it ran across the street, and I actually have a picture that I'm hoping I can show you. 
Yeah, so this is this is the fox across the street. He stood there and stared down my dogs for quite a while. You know, two, three minutes, which, you know, a wild animal sticking around for two or three minutes is a pretty big deal. So they were nuts. They were absolutely nuts. Trying to calm them down. The fox finally takes off just about get them calmed down and here comes the couple with their dog and the dogs are now in defensive mode they, they got to protect me from the fox and maybe these people are the fox i don't know how dogs think so they're really going nuts and like jumping up on the fence and stuff and i'm, I'm trying to calm them down and i get good morning and they, they're they're okay with it they're not upset or anything but i figure i gotta somehow explain this difference so i say loud because i'm trying to talk over the dogs so i say they're a little crazy this morning because a fox just walked by and the they both look at me the woman puts her head down and starts walking fast and the man says oh really and then he catches up to the woman and is gone I go, well, that's odd but okay i mean i wouldn't want to have a conversation either and i broke my own rule here so, okay, and, and I get the dogs calmed down, and I go to continue my pacing up and down the yard, and I think to myself, wait a minute, that statement could have meant more than one thing. Yeah, the word fox was ambiguous. And it is an unusual occurrence that an actual fox walks by. So I don't know what those neighbors think I was talking about now. Uh... I don't care really, but I thought you'd find that entertaining at least. But I got another neighbor story that is unfortunately not happy. Uh, my neighbor, a fellow named John, um, passed away this week. Uh, he was actually my next door neighbor. And while I do not like neighbors and do not tend to talk with them or anything. John and I had a bit more of a closer relationship. John's the only neighbor that I shared a beer with. Uh, he, it was summer, I was mowing the lawn back before I got smart and paid somebody to do it. And he was out in his little uh, garage area that he had set up to hide from his wife, his words, not mine. And he came out and he said, hey, it's a hot day. Why don't you come in and have a beer? And I thought, well, okay. And, and it was nice, you know, we drank a beer and chatted for a while. He had a TV in there and he was watching NASCAR and I don't, I don't know NASCAR. I don't have anything against it. I just don't know it. So didn't have much to say about that. And, uh, you know, I think I said something like, you know, finished up the beer and we talked for a little bit and I said, oh, I got to get back to the lawn, but next time I'll buy the beer. And he was happy about that. John was in his seventies at the time. Um, our other conversations tended to be, I'd be pushing the snowblower in his direction. He'd be pushing his snowblower in my direction. And where we'd meet before we'd turn around, he'd yell over the sounds of the snowblower, is that a two horsepower? <laughs> and I'd say, yes. And he pointed his and said, say 2.5. <laughs> he was only trying to out horsepower me. But those were the only conversations we ever had, honestly. Um, but he died. Uh, he had Parkinson's. He had less, less five years or so were not great for John. I didn't see a lot of him. And I've got this, and this happens from time to time, and I'm sure you've experienced it as well, this strange sense of, of loss that I don't quite know what to do with. You know, I'm not really grieving because I didn't know him that well. I certainly feel bad for his family and, you know, I hope that he, he is now in a better place and now that his suffering has ended and those sorts of things. Um, but it's just this sense of, you know, things aren't what they used to be. I never did buy him that beer. Should I have gotten to know him better? The answer to the latter is probably yes, because we can always learn from folks, and certainly folks that are older than us are always worth knowing.
and by the way, his wife is a lovely woman, and I've talked to her quite a bit. My wife talks to her quite a bit. Um, you know, over the past few years, I've been trying to help them out with the snow removal and things like that. And she always uh, has a kind word for me. And yeah, so it's not like every neighbor is a problem. Well, other than those two, every neighbor is a problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're... We're already at 15 minutes here, so let me let me give you some quick shop updates. Uh, been moving along down here, and, and things are looking good. Uh, I think the next picture is the. Uh, let me let me go back to pictures here. How do I do that? Yeah, so the shop fridge. I, th I told you guys maybe it was on a live stream that my shop fridge had died. It actually hasn't died. And there you see it on on the dolly uh, that I brought it up with. Let me let me come back to that in a second. So that refrigerator has been down here in the basement for over 22 years, running constantly, nonstop. I had it longer than that. My wife estimates that I bought it in 1992, uh, which would have been before I actually met her. But she knew me. Well, no, can't say that. It was before I was going out with her, but she knew me as a coworker. Um, <clears throat> so she thinks it was around 92. So that refrigerator has been going for a long time. Moved it down here when we moved into the house, just stuck it in a corner and plugged it in, and I've been keeping uh, beer and glue in it. That's, you know, I sometimes use hide glue, which has to be refrigerated. And that's its sole purpose in life, and it's been happily doing those things and keeping them cold for a very long time. I opened it up a couple weeks ago and there's a big block of ice in it and water came out and I thought, oh no, the ice is melting. It stopped. It's dead. It's dead. Um, but then it didn't get any more ice melt and it seemed fine. And I think what had happened was that, well, you'll see the block of ice. I think it was just too hot and they couldn't keep the ice solid anymore. But let me go back here and I'll show you so this, this is on the dolly. That dolly is a gift from my father-in-law. Uh, he got it when one of the steel mills in Pittsburgh was being decommissioned. And that thing has brought every piece of shop equipment down the basement steps here. I'd be lost without it. I don't use it that often, but it is a rock solid piece of, uh, piece of equipment. And you can see the refrigerator is a bit grungy and old, but for what it does, it's fine. This is the block of ice that was inside of it. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's the little freezer compartment, and it is completely embedded in ice. Um, it filled almost half of the whole refrigerator. And I put this thing outside in the sun yesterday at about 11 o'clock in the morning. And I didn't take a picture of this, but as of this morning, and right now it's just slightly after 10, uh, the ice is about half gone. <laughs> so it's got a long way to go. So I got that upstairs, I'm, I'm uh, defrosting it, I'll bring it back down and hopefully plug it in and it'll work again. If not, it's not a great loss. Like I said, I don't use it for that much, but I feel bad. It's been running for so long. I hope I didn't kill it by not defrosting it. We shall see. Um, otherwise, everything's going really well down here. Um, getting some more organization done. Finally got my dedicated buffer set up. And yes, Cole, there will be a video at some point. Uh, and I finished up cane rod pipes number two. This guy is, uh, if you saw it on Instagram, this is nothing new to you, but here she is. It's an attempt at a billiard. The proportions are not right. I can tell you why. But uh, I decided to really focus on the, the, the finish on this one. And I don't know if you'll be able to appreciate that, but I really like the way that stain came out. Not really a smooth grain pipe, as you can see, and there's some pretty big inclusions that you might be able to pick up on that side. But I just I wanted to play with staining, and so I left it smooth for that reason, and I'm pretty happy with that. The proportions are not right because I mapped everything out, and then there was a large inclusion right at the end of the shank that I had to get rid of, so that shortened the shank and I forgot to shorten the bowl. So the bowl is too tall, so this is, I guess, technically a stacked billiard. Anyway, number two in the books. Happy, happy. 
and that's where things uh, things are right now. So onward to number three. Beyond that, I gotta I gotta build a set of drawers to keep all my sharpening and sanding stuff in. That's my next organizational project. I looked for something. I just haven't been able to find something that is right. You know, it either doesn't have enough drawers or it's too big. Um, I'll just make something. It's, I mean, that's what I do, right? I'm a woodworker. I'll just make something. So that's going to be keeping me busy for a while. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We continue to build and organize and get things arranged. And we're getting better every day. So with that, folks, I am going to finish up my pipe and enjoy some more of this 8 o'clock coffee. And maybe start uh, getting some wood cut for the, uh, for the chest of drawers that I'm going to be making. Follow me on Instagram. I'll keep you updated on that as well. But with that, I am going to let you get off to your Sunday and your week, the remainder of your weekend, I suppose. And I hope you have a great Sunday, and I'm looking forward to a fantastic week ahead. Until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Thank mm -hmm. you.